Now that we've learned about how we model our data, we are ready to go to how this can be implemented using our ETL process. But first, we want to start with the question again, what is an ETL and how can we understand that? Just to have an understanding and an overview of that. Because now that we know how we can design our dimensional model, that's what we've learned in the previous sections, we are ready to bring in the data from our sources and model that with our ETL and bring it into our data warehouse. And that is basically what our ETL process is doing. And now let's quickly revisit also what we have already learned about the ETL process. So again, we have learned that there are data sources and of course our data for our data warehouse can come from all of these different sources and they need to be integrated, they need to be cleaned they need to be transformed and integrated in our data warehouse. And all of that we do with this ETL tool. And then of course this ETL tool is using or basically this is structured in extracting the data first from the data sources. Then we need to transform, that's what we've said. And then in the end of course, load it into our centralized location. So our final data warehouse. And we have seen also that there are different layers in our data warehouse. So we have learned that from the data sources, we first extract the data into our staging layer. And this is now the place where we have all of the data in tables. Maybe we have done some minor cleaning. We have extracted all of the relevant information. And then during the load from staging to the core, we are transforming the data. So this is basically where now our dimensional modeling is taking place. So we use the staging data, transform it, and this transformed data will be loaded into the core. And then from there, we can use the data with all of the different applications. And of course, we've also learned that in most cases, it makes sense to have one data mart for one specific use case. And like that, we can tailor the data mart more specifically to a given use case, which again improves the value of the data that we have in our data warehouse. Because now it's again easier to use, the performance is again even better. But now, how is this implemented in practice? Our ETL is of course done using so-called ETL tools. And an ETL tool, there are many out there, and also later on we'll discuss some of these important tools. And they are in the end just a set of built-in tools that we can use to first, of course, connect to different data sources. This is where the extract part is important. So we need to extract the data from different data sources. Then of course, we have many built-in tools to transform our data, to change data types, to add additional columns, to clean our data, to model our data, so to restructure it. And this is basically the main part in our ETL tools and in our ATL process. And of course, then we have again a set of tools to write the data back in different formats. So of course we are interested in writing the data back into databases, so our data warehouse. But theoretically, of course, there are many, many more options. And these ETL tools usually have thousands of different tools and possibilities where we can do things. And we are usually only using just a very small subset of that. But in our case, we have said that we are interested in loading the data in a data warehouse. So basically, this is all that we need to build our data warehouse. And now with this ETL tool, we are usually setting this up in a way that we have different workflows. So you understand that we have these different phases, these different layers, and accordingly, we build separate workflows. So we have one workflow, this is for the staging. And if you have a look into the ETL tools, this is basically how a workflow can look like. So we just have this drag and drop 
built in tools that we can drag so we can enter some credentials we can enter some connection details and then just some specific data will be extracted we can then do all of our transformations so this is a workflow that can be set up and then in the end of course we can write that again into our tables so this could be one workflow example for a staging layer and also then we have usually accordingly a staging schema in our database it could be also possible that we have for the staging for each of the different layers one separate database but usually this is handled via different schemas so of course we have the staging workflow then we have for the core and also usually for the data mart a workflow again this is not set in stone but this is just a common default strategy that is used and then once we have set up these workflows of course things are also scheduled using jobs so again once we have created and set up all of these workflows they are used now to do the data cleaning the data extraction and all of the processes and those jobs are now used to run these workflows based on defined rules so on specific times in specific frequencies so this is the broad overview of how our etl is set up and now that we have understood that we of course want to dive deeper into the different steps the different processes that we are doing in our etl process so that's what we are going to do in the next lectures from here we now want to dive deeper into the segment of extracting the data we have already seen that we need to extract the data from the data sources into our staging layer and once we have done that the data is now already part of our data warehouse in the staging layer and of course we do that to not put any unnecessary load on this source systems so of course they are productive systems and we cannot risk to slow them down and we cannot use that to just work on the data understand the data and plan our transformational steps therefore we need to have the data in our staging environment and of course now this is also the place where all of the data is finally available in sql tables so that's why we need to bring it into this staging layer and from here we can now do our transformations and we can plan them out and load that with these transformations into the next layer and also remember that the typical type of staging layer is of the transient type this is the most common type and that means that all of the data once it has been copied from the staging layer with the transformations will be deleted or truncated from the staging layer and then until the next run will be empty till new data has been loaded into the staging layer and then only this new data will again be then copied into the next layer which is the core layer so this is the common type the transient type of course we can also in some cases have the permanent type but we are focusing on the transient type because this is the common type and with that being said so these are the fundamentals about the extracting of the data we have now two different types so first we have the initial load and then also we have the so-called delta load so of course the initial load as the name suggests is the first real run of our etl so of course we can do some testings before some small extractions but the first time when we want to load all of the relevant data this is called the initial load and then of course we also have the delta load which is the subsequent load and now we don't load all of the data anymore but only the additional data that has been occurred in the source system so only the new data and again this is where we want to now dive a little bit deeper into understanding what exactly and how exactly does it work with the initial load and the delta load so that's what we are doing in the next lecture
Now, this is where, in my opinion, it's getting really interesting because now we want to start with the initial load of our data. So how does this work? Of course, first we need to extract in the first step all of the initial data from the source system. So this is what we call initial load. And we have to keep in mind that this is usually taking place after some discussions with both the business users and the IT responsibles. So usually there are some business users that are using the reports and doing the reporting. And then there are also some more IT responsible people that are administrating the source systems or the databases. So they are more of the technical responsibles. And we usually have a discussion with both of them, what data we can extract, how the data is structured and what data is needed by the business users. And once we have decided what data we need, we also of course need to discuss what is now a good time for that initial load. So of course that initial load, since we load all of the data all at once, takes a lot of time and puts the highest burden or the highest load on the source systems. And therefore, we also need to discuss, since these are productive systems, what should be a good time. So usually some time when the company is not operating, so maybe during the night or if it's taking more time it can be also during the weekend during sundays and this of course needs to be discussed with those responsibles so that we are sure that we are not slowing these productive systems unnecessarily down and therefore we need to discuss it with them and of course we can also make some smaller extractions just to test how much time is needed for these initial loads so that we have some estimate and we can tell them it probably takes three hours when is a good period during the week when we can load that data. So this is then the most crucial moment for this extraction of the data from the source systems. But of course, then once we have the data in the staging layer, we also have some initial load to the core layer where all of the transformations will be applied. And this, of course, happens then after we have designed and planned and tested all of the transformation steps we have designed in our ETL tool. So this is basically then the second step of the initial load. And in this case, we just again copy all of the data from staging into the core layer. So this is the initial load. And then there is also the second type, which is the delta load. And this delta load is now for the next runs. So we need to make sure that now we only load the new data. And how this works now, we want to understand in the next lecture.